$300,000 per year. Now, I don't know about you all, but this figure would be far from affordable for my family. However, this is what it costs for my mother to have access to the medications that she needs to survive. Now, fortunately, my family has high quality insurance to the hospitals they work at, but not all families are as fortunate. Many families don't have access to this high quality insurance and they're forced to take the brunt of these costs, causing them to make sacrifices that they shouldn't have to make for medications that they didn't ask to need. Drug companies need to lower their prices because they're seeing incomparable profit margins while the prices of their medications soar past the rate of inflation. And families are forced to make tough choices that they shouldn't be required to make. Opponents argue that you're not only paying for the medication involved, but also the research that goes into it. They point out the many medications that don't make it to market, but still need funded research. However, this fails to take into account the, the continued growth of prices in prescription drugs that is inconsistent with the rate of inflation and the imbalance of profit margins from this sector to others. First, in the example of the S&P 500, pharmaceutical companies have seen significantly larger profits than that of other companies. From 2000 to 2018, 35 pharmaceutical companies in the S&P 500 reported a net profit of $1.9 trillion. Net profit is the cost, is their is the company's initial revenue minus all the costs of research, equipment, production, salaries, and taxes. This number is their pure profit. Out of 357 other companies in the S&P 500, they, made, they reported a net profit of $9.4 trillion. This means that when you take into account the sample size, the pharmaceutical companies had twice the profit of these other companies. These companies, these 35 pharmaceutical companies, also reported a 13.8% profit margin, meaning that 13.8% of their revenue was taken in as profit. However, the other companies only reported a 7.7% profit margin, again pointing to the profit margin that is two times higher in these pharmaceutical companies because of the prices they're charging for the prescription drugs. In addition to the profit margins, the price of prescription drugs simply doesn't make sense. In an American Association of Retired Persons Public Policy Institute report, it was discovered that from the years 2006 to 2017, the price of 754 widely used drugs increased faster than inflation in every year. Proving that this was not simply to combat the inflation rate, but to make more of a profit off these people who need these medications. It was also shown that in 2017 specifically, we saw there was an increase in the price of prescri prescription drug prices twice as fast as inflation at a whopping 4.2%. This means that for a drug that costs $11,000 a month, or typically $132,000 a year, you would see an increase in price of about $500 per month and about $6,000 in a year. To put this into perspective, Medicare reported a $110 billion increase in their spending due to this rise, due to this increase in prescription drug prices. To put this into perspective, $110 billion could buy, could pay for rent for 9 million US families for a year, college tuition for 9 million U.S. students for a year, or groceries for 25 million U.S. families for a year. These numbers are absurd and illogical. Other than the difference in profit margins and the illogical increase in drug prices, these numbers also have significant impacts on families who are forced to pay the price of these medications. A lot of families don't have access to high quality insurance, which forces them to make choices on what they need to spend their money on. A choice that they shouldn't have to make for medications that they didn't ask to need. These families are forced to take the brunt of these costs. 
and make their decisions based off of what is affordable rather than what is needed. In a survey done by CVSHealth.com, it was reported that 88% of people agreed were concerned with the rise in cost of prescription drugs. This means that nearly 90% of the population is negatively affected by these increasing numbers. Now that we've established the economic, logistical, and social consequences of high prescription drug prices, I ask you to return to the $300,000 figure I mentioned at the beginning of this speech. Think about the sacrifices you'd have to make to afford a number so large. You would have no heat, likely no electricity, no running water, and think about your housing situation. Would you even be able to afford a house? Families shouldn't need to make these types of sacrifices just in order to survive and thrive. It's time that drug companies stop putting profits over people.